I still remember a lot of what we need to do from the like Left 4 Dead custom map that we played. Playing through that map, I think we played through it a couple of months ago, but like it was a pretty good refresher course on uh, Resident Evil stuff. I'm kind of sad we're out of, like, a lot of crossover stuff now. Like, there's just, uh, there's no more, like, Left 4 Dead, uh, Left 4 Dead Resident Evil, like, crossover maps and stuff like that. Which is kind of the main reason, too, why I haven't been playing Left 4 Dead in a little bit. It's just because we've, we've gone through all the maps that I really wanted to take a look at. And so it's just hard wading through a lot of the, like, basic maps. Especially with Steam, like, the, the looking for maps on Steam is just kind of impossible. And a lot of the maps would, like... Uh, searching by like the most popular or searching by like the most subscribed maps doesn't really help out either because there's a lot of maps on there that are like extremely piss poor still that apparently a ton of people just have on. Vigil, that's right, we're gonna make that. I needed room to make the Vigil. Alright, so where's the note on how to make it? Uh, there's something written on the wall. 1 plus 3 equals 4, 4 plus 6, 10. Yep, yep, that's basic math for you. Uh, water run. One, red three, purple four, yellow six. It looks like a water tap. Oh, maybe we don't have the th uh, the note to make V Jolt yet. I thought the note was like right in that room, but maybe it's not. we go in this room? I don't think we did. I think we just grabbed the ink ribbons and left. Uh, the tap for the wash, the wash basin doesn't seem to be working. It's full of dirty water, full of blood. There's something in the bathtub. Knife. We still got a pretty decent amount of defensive weapons. I don't know how many knives we have now, but we have like four uh, tasers. Oh, so we need the book. Uh, a giant plant is crushing a wall, a swarm of angry moths surround it. Your view is blocked by the dense thicket of trees. Fuck, we're gonna go all the way back again. I should have grabbed the book, but I'm never thinking that far ahead. My cats are playing underneath the door. I just see a little paw just occasionally coming underneath. Man, every time I come into this office, it looks so boring. I need to get some more posters and shit to like hang up in here. 
uh, with the holidays rolling, uh, rolling around and stuff, um, instead of having the lamp, I kind of want to get some like colored uh, Christmas lights or just holiday lights set up around the office. I also wanted to get like a tapestry or uh, some sort of like blanket with a design on it or something to like throw on that back wall so it's not just the really old like wood. And in front of me too, like there's just a huge wall of just just blank wood. I definitely need more decor uh, decorative stuff in here. Then I just need to clean it out in general. I have a lot of garbage in here. It's definitely like not as bad as XQC's office or something like that, but. Stop doing that. <laughs> uh, the shelf is lined with red books. There's one white one switched in between. Uh, organic chemistry lab experiments. The similar uh, sim <laughs> similarities in the cellular characteristics of the rapidly growing plant infected by the tyrant virus have been reported in previous pages. Uh, however, while repeating these experiments, an interesting new fact became clear. We learned that the chemical in the UMB family, UMB number 20, contains a compound that is toxic to the cells of the plant. We have given number 20 a new name, V-Jolt. If calculations prove correct, when V-Jolt is applied directly to the root of the plant, the entire plant should be dead within 5 seconds. The V-Jolt can be made by simply mixing VP and UMB chemicals in a specific ratio. However, extra care must be taken care of or must be taken when handling UMB chemicals. They have been known to generate toxic gases if mishandled. Uh, the characteristics of UMB chemicals are as followed. Uh, three, red, yellow, green, orange, blue, and dark brown. Uh, the space between the books catches your attention. The bindings of the books seem to form some kind of pattern. Reorder the books. Pretty sure that's how we make the Vigil now. Is Vigil is like uh it's like twenty. Two of these. Fill one with water. Uh, fill one with red. So now we have purple. Plus two is six. All right, I'm just trying to remember how we do this.
No, we only need three. Uh, let's mix these together. Okay, well that didn't work either. Created toxic gas. It's probably a good idea to leave the room now. Yeah, you don't say. Oh man, I hope it doesn't stay like that the whole time. Thankfully, I am not poisoned though. I think I actually get it now. So I think it's water, red. Then yellow. And then I think maybe it's another red. Or water and red. Could it be? Because there's only the red and yellow in here. Oh, do I mix the red and the yellow now? Nope, those don't combine together. So I got this. I got 17. Then 17 plus 3. So just one more red. Oh, well, we got the V Jolt now. I don't think we do actually, because I'm pretty sure. Examine. Uh, it's a distinctly brown liquid. Because if we did leave the v or make the vigil, it should have gotten rid of these other bottles.
Yeah, no, no, it's weird. Normally when you... Normally when you make the vigil, it'll tell you to, uh... Or it'll ask you, like, do you want to remove these items? But, like, we've got to obviously made... I wonder if it's just a glitch. Because I've never had that happen on the console version before. The Vigil thing is probably one of the hardest puzzles that we're going to find in this game. Because otherwise, most of the puzzles in this are pretty much fine. Honestly, I think the worst puzzle in a Resident Evil game is, uh... There's this one puzzle in Resident Evil 3 that, uh... It has to do with, like, sound waves, basically. Um, so there's like four different grids, each grid having like, uh, like scrolling pieces of, uh, like sound or just like bars, basically like a bar graph. And you're supposed to like match up the bars with what's on the screen above, but there's just so much going on on the screen. There's so much like counting and like keeping track that you have to do. And for the longest time as a kid, I had no idea how to do that puzzle. I think it was by, like, pure luck that I even got by it. When it comes to bad puzzles in Resident Evil games, like, in terms of difficulty, I definitely think Res 3 is probably the worst. But at the same time, I also appreciate it because it was different. The door refuses to open. Bro, you gotta be fucking kidding me, man. Uh, I never got to fucking go down and use the V-Jolt. I thought this was the way to use the knee jolt. Aw oh, man, I don't want to die either because it's been a while since I fucking saved. This fucking plant doesn't like to stay open on it. You gotta be fucking kidding me, man. Bro, I hate how you can't walk away from that fight. That's so fucking stupid that that door locks on you. Well... That was kind of a waste of an hour. Oh well, we don't have to do all the other bullshit now. I mean, we know what we need to do.
Oh, I think the fucking, um... I think the Vigil room is down by where the Sharks is, where we have to use it. Oh, I fucking would get poisoned too, one another. Yeah, thinking about it now, I think when we drain the water, if we would have kept walking on the catwalk, there's a, a room where we could have planted the V-Jolt. Pretty sure this one had a blue and a uh, green one in it. Yeah. Well, we don't need to come back here for the lighter or anything then. Just come in here for the items. To be fair, that wasn't the game's fault. That was completely all me. I just wasn't even thinking where I was supposed to be going. I've also never fought that boss without the V-Jolt before too, just because of how annoying it is. Especially seeing how, like, uh, it seems like the only way to actually damage it is sitting up there. But then you just have to constantly get abused by the tentacles or fucking poison until it, like, finally opens up again. No, I but it should be really quick to get back to that point, though. So I'm also not really too hurt by it. And you know, I got us a trophy anyways. Not that I care about trophies on Steam. Ooh, I was facing forward this time. I was gonna say, is he gonna get back up? I'd rather just remove him from this earth completely. I wanted to say I wish I could play this with a controller. Just because I feel like it make the movement a little bit more easier. But honestly, like, I have trouble with a lot of these fixed camera angle games, even, like, with a controller. So it, it honestly wouldn't have helped all that much.
to wake up and leave before that guy can get himself up. gonna kill this man with his own gun. That was kind of anticlimactic. I was kind of hoping that, like, using the self-defense gun would also, like, instantly blow their head off. I think the Magnum maybe does that. Honestly, I don't even know what to do with that gun once it runs out of ammo. Because I don't think you can get ammo refills for those, unless it's just like a magnum bullet or something. I think the guns are basically just useless once they're out. The only thing I hate about the residence is it's just a bunch of wandering back and forth. I mean, to be fair, that's how a lot of these older games were, was spending the majority of the game in just like, like one area. I know when it comes to the Resident Evil series, a lot of people will talk about uh, Resident Evil 2 being like the first game they're introduced to. And uh, probably like a lot of people's favorites in the series. Cause I have a lot of friends that have played Res 1 and then I've played uh, Res 2. Uh, basically like all my friends say that Res 2 is probably their favorite game in the series. Uh, me personally, I've always kind of loved the Res 3. It feels like it concludes and it wraps up shorter than a lot of the other Resident Evil games. But you're also not, like, confined to one location for the majority of the game. You're, like, going through an entire city's worth of, like, locations from, like, uh, starting off at, like, the factory, making your way through, like, the city, a brief visit a brief visit to like the RPD station alleyways the train station like there's so many different locations in res 3 the bosses and weapons are cool uh, the like zombie I love the zombie design in that game too and then obviously like nemesis is just such an iconic boss too. Because I don't know how people can like Mr. X when he's barely in the original Res 2 game. And then there's also the fact that, like, there's two bosses in Res 2, being Mr. X and William Birkin. So that's pretty much just my thing about Res 2. That's why I think that 3 is better. Even if it does have some really shitty qualities to it, like some of the puzzles just being insanely difficult.
But I also feel like nowadays games are just way too easy. Detected. Locking all doors to achieve maximum safety. Well, the games nowadays are either way too easy they're, or they're all just like multiplayer based. Reaching 30% of pressure threshold. Pressure threshold. Activate emergency drainage system immediately. So like, the only way to get around like the awful like fixed cameras is to basically like when you transition to a new camera, just completely stop moving and then just press the button again. Otherwise you sometimes have the situation where you're just like switching back and forth between the two cameras. If I could just move one direction and then the next camera would just continue to move in that direction, like it'd be a different story, but... I think next stream we're gonna do some more Left 4 Dead stuff. I think later tonight I might watch some YouTubers, uh, see what kind of like good Left 4 Dead campaigns are. There's a channel that I follow on YouTube called uh, You Always Win. Uh, they do COD, like, uh, they used to do a lot of Call of Duty World at War zombies, and now, like, Black Ops 3 zombies and stuff like that. And they did pretty much all they play in zombie games. They did Left 4 Dead stuff, Seven Days, like, whatever survival or zombie games popping off at the time, uh, they'll basically play. But whenever there's not, like, any major zombie titles out. It's typically just Left 4 Dead and Call of Duty, which is where I got, like, a lot of inspiration to do the Left 4 Dead stuff. Um, they had stopped with Left 4 Dead for quite a bit, too. But they just recently started re-uploading a lot. And I think it's them just revisiting a lot of older maps, too, that maybe they just missed out on, or they're just running out of new maps to play. So they're just going back with a lot of the older ones. So, I may take a look at some of their videos to see uh, what campaigns they've taken a look at. They also look at survival maps too, which is something that I don't really do a lot. Although that is something I wanted to do at one point though, was uh, I wanted to review and then do a tier list of like all the Left 4 Dead survival maps. So 
So I think that's maybe something we could do eventually. I did do a tier list of like all the base game campaigns. So from like Left 4 Dead 1 and 2. But it didn't, that video didn't really perform as well as I wished it did. On top of, I just think that it just wasn't interesting enough for people to even give a shit about. If the channel was bigger, I probably would have just like stream the tier list anyways or stream the tier list that way I could get like feedback uh, people can like put in their opinions or uh, remind myself of like oh yeah I actually hated this campaign you're right But I also kind of wanted to keep the tier list YouTube exclusive. Because uh, I've been trying to think of like video ideas and stuff for specifically just YouTube. But the only thing I could think of is just checking out and reviewing uh, just like small little like horror games and stuff like that. Which I'd be totally fine with, because that's what I started the channel with, like, way back in the day. Was just a lot of, like, playing horror games and such. It was mainly all FNAF, or just a bunch of free shit on Game Jolt. Damn bees, I didn't even see them at first. Another thing too is not only does the bee jolt, or the bee jolt, the bee jolt actually like hurt the plant. But I'm pretty sure Barry also comes and helps me too uh, once I use the Vigil. He'll like set it on fire. Like it basically skips that whole boss fight with Jill. As opposed to uh, if I was playing Chris, uh, I'd still have to go through like a small portion of the fight. I've also wondered which ending is supposed to be the canon ending in this game. I mean, obviously the ending where everyone makes it out is the canon ending because, you know, Barry and Rebecca are still alive. But like, you don't encounter uh, Rebecca as Jill and vice versa with Chris, you don't encounter Barry at all. So it's always made me wonder like, which one is supposed to be the canon ending? Because whatever player you don't choose is basically held captive by Wesker. <laughs> <laughs> 